Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green white enchantments slash ramp deck featuring four copies of Case of the Locked Hothouse, one of my favorite new cards from the latest expansion. I'm always a fan of casting spells and playing lands off the top of the deck, and this card enables that pretty easily. A four mana case starts by letting us play an extra land each turn, which is why our deck is playing a very high land count, 28 total, so we can keep hitting those land drops and get to full use out of our hothouse. Then we need to get seven or more lands in play in order to solve the case, which happens at the beginning of our end step. And then once the case is solved, we can both play lands and cast creatures and enchantments off the top of our deck. And since we get to play an extra land each turn with a single hothouse out, we get to play two lands off the top potentially, so we can very quickly string together a whole bunch of spells for free. And if we find multiple hothouses, then we get to play multiple extra lands off the top as well, so that all plays together very nicely. And to get the most out of our case, not only do we have a lot of lands, but also every non-land card in our deck is either a creature or an enchantment, so that we never end up with an uncastable spell on the top of our deck. And of course, the best home after some trial and error for this ended up being a green-white enchantment deck, which will of course satisfy every non-land card being a creature or enchantment. And then we also get to play with Hallowed Haunting as our primary win condition. This card also rewards us for casting a lot of spells off the top of our deck, as now whenever we cast an enchantment, we get to make a Spirit Cleric token that grows with a number of other spirits we control. And then eventually those tokens will also gain Flying and Vigilance if we have seven or more enchantments on the battlefield. And then another awesome addition from the latest expansion is Buried in the Garden, enchants a land, gets rid of an opposing non-land permanence, so both creatures as well as non-creatures, and then when the enchanted land is tapped for mana, it makes an additional mana, so it also ramps us, so it's perfect for this deck. And then we also get Ossification alongside lots of basic lands as another nice removal spell that enchants one of our lands. And then Azus has many journeys, a card that's typically not that exciting since most decks don't have enough lands to get the most out of it. But since we're playing 28 lands, this can potentially let us cast one of our many 4 drops as early as turn 3. And then even if we already have lots of lands in play, and we cast this off the top of our deck with our case enabled, then we get to play an extra land off the top as well, so that's still pretty effective, so we can keep going and uh, don't hit kind of a wall of lands. And then to round out the deck, Jukai Naturalist will give our enchantments a discount, also makes it easier to string together multiple spells off the top, and a 2-2 lifelink can also maybe gain a bit of life against aggro, and can enable those explosive starts where we play it turn 3 and follow it up with another 2-mana enchantment right away and one of those could be a Spirited Companion, enters and draws a card. At first I did have the 2-mana ramp card that finds a basic forest, since it also works pretty well with our case, getting an extra land on the battlefield, but after testing the deck I was just much happier having all enchantments to trigger Hallow Taunting and to get the most out of our Jukai Naturalist. And then at 3 mana, Restoration of Igancho is also perfect, as it finds a planes and can potentially put that in play or get a different 2 drop back out of our graveyard. So it also helps us ramp and just helps us hit our land drops and kind of ties everything together. And then we also get to play with a new Surveil land, which enters stamped but lets us Surveil 1. So this is also pretty nice once we have a solved case, as we get to potentially play it off the top. And if we see another land on top that we don't want, we can easily put it in the graveyard instead. Just gives us a tiny bit more card selection. And then I'm not playing the Pain land in this deck since we don't really need it. And the uh, Fast land is also not really necessary since we're a deck aiming for the late game. And I don't want my lands entering tapped later if I can avoid it. At least here we get to surveil and this is also a nice creature land once we have a few tokens on the battlefield this can pump those up and then a Boseju and Daiganjo offering a bit more interaction as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand if we're up against a creature deck especially with double ossification and then yeah let's just play the portico now don't think I need another forest Looking for some of our four mana cards. Opponent on mono black. For now, we can many journeys. Not in a hurry to answer a 1 1. And a bat. Alright. So, no matter what, we can get our card back with ossification. 
They could take Restoration to just kind of throw off my curve, some Forced Ossification, which makes sense. And uh, I guess I'll oblige. Gonna keep an Ossification in hand in case something like Shieldred were to show up. Or Gix is also a good one to answer. Now they also know about Iganjo, but it's probably gonna be played as a land soon. There's Gix. Okay, so they get to draw their card. Can keep the farmland as a surprise for now. And then, yeah, if they also have a shield route, that could be bad. But uh, chances of them having removal for or likeness are pretty high, so can't afford to let Gix stay around. It's gonna be a Phyrexian Obliterator instead. Alright. Don't wanna use Igunja on that one. So, can uh, basically put a land in play for free here, and then Restoration, get another land. But yeah, we need another Ossification or Buried in the Garden to answer Obliterator now. A case of the Locked Hothouse would be a nice top deck as well, since we already have seven lands in play. And yeah, Vault Sleeper we could answer with Igenjo. Opponent's still attacking. Maybe they just want to bait it out. But they're gonna waste a bunch of mana first. And another sleeper. Alright, we get to surveil at least. I guess I can uh, discard it. And then, yeah, case of the locked hot house. They can make me discard it. We'll draw it next turn. And then hopefully we can take over and our life total is still pretty high. So I'll keep our likeness back on defense. So we're gonna take at least another attack from the Obliterator before we actually get to play stuff off the top. And then hopefully we'll find an answer soon. Second Obliterator would be very bad. So they can level up Sleeper most of the way. So let's see, 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three. and then, yeah, 4-4 four, four Death Touch, so it's not like Architect can attack. Alright, play our case. And then we need a good turn. We'll get to take a peek at the top of our deck already. A land coming up. Not opposed to triple blocking Evolved Sleeper. Although they might have two removal spells at this point. At least we'll get some 1-1s out of the deal. Opponent's just going to draw a few more cards. So we're still trading here. And we can survive one more Obliterator attack, potentially. And there we go. We found our answer. So we might be able to turn the corner now. Probably fine to keep ossification on top, even though we could potentially cast a few more spells. And then I could also keep land in hand, but we might need all the mana just to kind of bait them into using a discard spell, perhaps. 
And I'll attack, even if they have a blitzed underdog we can trade. Might see a cut down. And that's fair. So I could technically die to double blitzed underdog. So maybe should have kept one token back. Lord Skitter is acceptable. And Shieldred we can also vacation. So the game continues. Waiting to find our Hallowed Haunting to really close it out. But we should be able to see quite a few cards now. Another case. So I get to play one more land off the top, so it's still pretty useful. And there's Hallowed Haunting. Which is why I wanted to wait on Ossification. But yeah, now I have to answer Shieldred's. These are also spirits, so they do synergize with Hallowed Haunting. And then we're one mana short of Hallowed Haunting first. Now I could still take a bit of a risk, cast a Hallowed Haunting, hope there's a land next, so I can play a land and Ossification. That might be unnecessarily risky. Since right now Ossification Shieldred, I get a token, so even if they have one removal spell, I don't die. If they have two removal spells, then we are dead. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I can really risk it here, can I? I think we just gotta hope to uh, survive another turn. And then I'm happy chumping Lord Skitter if necessary, so we don't die to a second Shieldred. Potent goes all out. So double blocking Lord Skitter is an option. If I block block, then our spirit will eventually die once the 1-1 one -one goes away. So we're just, you know, trading for a 1-1 one -one token essentially. So we may as well double block Lord Skitter, so we still don't die to a Shieldred. And so uh, we maybe force them to use a removal spell here, otherwise we trade. Alright. And another Obliterator. Okay, we need to find another removal spell here. But there's a reasonable chance we do. Another Haunting. So let's see, I can cast two of them, still have five mana left. I mean, we may be able to just uh, beat the Obliterator's ability. Restoration, so cast Hello Taunting. Cast Restoration, yeah, I guess we'll keep it. Best case scenario if there's also vacation on top. Alright. Got six blockers. And uh, yeah, can potentially sacrifice a few lanes now to the obliterator. Now, interestingly, if our opponent has, let's say, a go for the throat and I block Obliterator with only one creature, then they just kill the one blocker and trample for lethal, so they win. Problem is, if I block with two creatures, then we're dealing 12 damage to the Obliterator and I have to sacrifice 12 permanents, which I don't think I can survive realistically. So yeah, if our opponent's got uh, go for the throat here, we lose. But uh, yeah, realistically, double block Obliterator, then they just let damage happen, sacrifice 12 permanents, can sacrifice the rest of my creatures, which is 6, and then 6 lands. Maybe I can still beat that, as crazy as that sounds, with triple hallowed haunting. Alright, may as well, if this is the only way I lose. So damage happens. 
So, get rid of all my creatures. Unless, I mean, I guess we can just sack all my lands and win with the creatures at this point. That also works. Don't think there's a sweeper I need to play around. So that's four. Five, six. And then another six. Six. Okay. And they did actually have a go for the throat, so... Glad we uh, double blocked. But now we might lose multiple creatures to a bunch of spot removal. No, just a land. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. What an epic game. And uh, yeah, we got there in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands keepable. Lots of interaction, so hopefully we're up against the creature strategy. Blue-black often points toward a more controlling deck. In which case, this hand may not be at its best. So, still gonna play Naturalist, so we can maybe play one of our 4-drops next turn. But don't have high hopes for Naturalist surviving. Opponent, uh... Getting rid of a deadly cover-up as well. Alright, at least we've got a bit of redundancy here. Now we just need to hit those land drops to solve our case. Our opponent did nothing with three mana. Seems to be stuck on three. Let's see if they have a counter spell. They do. Alright, so we'll have to be a bit more careful with our second case, since we really wanted to resolve. So I think we just pass it back. Yeah, definitely not the matchup to draw for removal spells. Now our opponent's got an outrageous robbery for x equals 1 to steal our top card. And a naturalist. So they could have another make disappear. But they would have to sack naturalist to cast it with casualty. Could also bury it in the garden. And that also gives us more mana to play around another make disappear. I think that's reasonable given our current hand. Alright, negate. So, good that we baited it out. Do I care about ossification on naturalist? Not really. Don't think our opponent's playing many enchantments. Alright, restoration wouldn't be bad to resolve. So I think once again go with buried in the garden. Looks like the auto-tapper didn't cooperate here. We would have been able to play Restoration afterwards. But now, since we targeted the tapped land, we're going to be a one-mana short. Opponent's going to take out their own Naturalist. Alright, that felt a little bit extreme. But uh, Buried in the Garden resolves. We've got our extra mana, but sadly only two left here. And drag the canal is why they wanted to take out their own creature. So they get to gain two life and surveil two. Getting rid of some spot removal. And intrude on the mind. So we get to decide which pile of cards they get. We probably want to leave them with a large token that we can get rid of with ossification. And now is our chance to resolve our locked hothouse. So we can have a look. There's a counter spell, another intrude on the mind. So we'll give them intrude on the mind. And then we can get rid of a 4 4 token pretty easily. So the case is solved. And yeah, let's ossification as opposed to. Casting a Restoration here. 
could cast another one, but we know another intrude is incoming, which is probably going to be larger than their detective. So despite kind of a messy start, we finally get our hothouse going, which will hopefully take over the game. Still have to watch out for their creature land as well. So ideally we get a hallowed haunting going next. Alright, one's going to main phase intrude once again. Deadly cover-up could be annoying if they get rid of a hallowed haunting that way, but uh, that's not the case. Lazav Thirst, Lazav Cover-up and Reef. I think we give them Lazav and uh, Thirst. Since the cover-up's also a way for them to wipe the board if we get Hallowed Haunting going eventually. Alright, start with Companion. Play another one of these. Restoration. And then we've got two land drops left. Okay. So we're pretty far ahead of mana now. Restless Reef gonna get busy. Yeah, let's jump. I think we've got the late game inevitability. Just worried about protecting our life total here. And then... Anything interesting to get back. Could go for a Naturalist to give me a bit of a mana discount this turn. And then get rid of maybe another Restoration of Iganjo, even though this is a shuffle effect, which can be useful if there's kind of a brick on top of the deck. But with double Hothouse, we've got three extra land drops we can play. I guess I could also just get rid of the land in hand. And then, yeah, I think I like Naturalists. Play a land, play companion. Still waiting for Hallowed Haunting. Restoration. Gets to search a plains. Another companion. Many journeys, keep it going, and there's Hallowed Haunting at long last. All right. So I think we are fine playing another Naturalist. Land of the top, another Hallowed Haunting. Another land, I guess we have to be a little careful about getting milled out at this point. And then, let's see, I guess I'll enchant my farmland. So we still have an extra mana available. Break my own rule of only enchanting basics. And uh, I guess we may as well go all out here and present lethal next turn. Although it's possible they've drawn another deadly cover up in the meantime. There's two in the graveyard, three unknown cards in hand. But I would really like to present lethal next turn. I guess we can still grow the spirits next turn to get there. So sure, let's just uh, hold something back so we can rebuild more easily. So let's say they have a Jace, they can mill me for 15, that's not lethal. And then we have a few enchantments to grow the spirits and attack for the win. Alright, opponent has the cover up sadly. And we'll see what they get rid of. They might go for Buried in the Garden, goes for Naturalist. So now, decking by Jace could be a more realistic uh, win condition for the opponent. but we just have to rebuild as quickly as possible. They're unlikely to have another sweeper. So I'll grab a companion here. Cast another haunting. No 
no point playing around it, but our opponent concedes, so they must not have Jace in the deck. And uh, yeah, Triple Haunting is gonna get the game over with pretty quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Good mix of interaction, some mana acceleration, and hothouse. Hopeful Initiate's actually pretty scary since that can eventually destroy enchantments as well. For now, let's play the Prairie since I'm not sure yet what to do with a Surveil 1. Once we're a bit later in the game, we'll have a better idea. Kellen, probably worth answering with an Ossification. Although, let's see. If I let them keep Kellen, they can of course train, Initiate picks up a first counter. But then next turn, I guess I could just play Restoration. I wouldn't be able to necessarily go many journeys plus something else. Whereas if I play many journeys now, next turn we can maybe go Naturalist plus Ossification in the same turn. Or we could play the Naturalist now. Even though it doesn't block particularly well. It would allow me to empty my hand next turn. I should just answer Kellen, prevent the training. Hope they don't have an Adlin on three. Because Kellen can also find more threats. It's gonna be a Spellbook Vendor. At least it doesn't actually give them a plus one counter. So the initiative is less likely to uh, destroy our enchantments. Okay, so now could go with Restoration, could Many Journeys, or we could even go Naturalist plus Portico. And then next turn, maybe double spell more effectively. Because yeah, the problem is our second green source entering tapped, so that's kind of a bottleneck. Alright, let's play the Naturalist then. And I will keep a land on top to enable Hothouse. Even though we could use more removal. Vanguard bumps a team. And a laid on arms, a nice one mana answer. Alright, so next up we can go Naturalists, Many Journeys, and Restoration. All in one go. And then now we're getting close to enabling the Hothouse. Oof, Adversary, that's bad news. Now they get to pump their team, and we don't have a good block with the Naturalist. So that's 11 coming across. Yeah, if we can top deck a removal spell next turn, I still have hope, but... Uh, we're running out of time. Now I could jump and then next turn get our Naturalist back, although it will enter tapped. So it's not gonna have a chance to jump later. So I may as well get a discount. Alright, Buried in the Garden, that works. So we get to Bury. Exile Adversary, I imagine. Pay the ward. And then we can still play our case. So on the board we're not dead. And then next turn we'll get a bunch of creatures, but if they've got another removal spell, that's game over. So with two vendors they can grow both two toughness creatures. So we'll have to chump now. So that was a good draw. Of course our opponent's been scrying in the meantime. So I chump and fall to one. And our hothouse is not enabled yet, so... I don't have high hopes here. Another restoration. We do now get two creatures, but uh, they don't gain life. 
Restoration would finally get our 7th land to enable our case. But yeah, just a little bit too much pressure from the Mono White aggro deck. I can animate the Prairie, so we actually have 3 blockers. But our opponent's got 4 attackers, so that'll do it. Yeah, Buried in the Garden would have been a nice follow-up. So, pretty close game, all things considered. Not sure if we could have made some different decisions along the way that might have worked out better. But some good draws from our opponent as well. Lots of scrying. Can animate the prairie. And line up some blocks. GG's. If only we got that token before blockers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to companion. Restoration helps us ramp a little bit up against Monorad Aggro. Okay, so it's gonna be a tough matchup. Hopefully we'll find some life gain along the way. And removal is nice to have. So if they play an impactful 2-drop, I might have to ossification next turn. Now I could be convinced to play Restoration first. I guess now with uh, many journeys we can double spell many journeys and ossification. And it's going to be a while before we can interact with a flyer. Opponent is going to play with Fire or Companion, that's aggressive. Not even sure if I would have attacked with it. So we take four. And a Buried in the Garden isn't bad. So, can only do one thing. Hello Taunting can get us on the board next turn. If I next turn cast Buried in the Garden, then I guess we would need to draw land in order to also play Restoration, because I cannot go Restoration into Buried in the Garden. So I think we just deal with one of the creatures right now. And then next turn we might be able to double spell, although it would be Restoration first and then Haunting if I don't draw land, which wouldn't trigger the Hallowed Haunting. So maybe I should just Haunt first. Definitely a close call. It does mean taking more damage, but our opponent didn't seem to have an impactful 3-mana creature in hand. That's because they had a 4-mana one. Alright, that's a lot of damage now, but at least we still have an answer to the Raiju. And another Haunting. Can't really afford to play that one. So, let's just bury it in the garden. And then hope to be able to trade off here. Just etching attacking. So if they have a monstrous rage, I kind of get punished. So may as well double block. That worked. Okay, so haunting number two versus restoration. Get a land, trigger Haunting, and then play another Haunting. I think in this case, I just want to get my cards in play as soon as possible, even if I miss out on a trigger. And then, can I afford to attack? Yeah, I think so. Let's say our opponent has another Raiju, we can still trade. If they have Raiju plus a burn spell or a pump spell, I might regret it. But I also want to try and close out the game before they top deck a critical mass of burn spells. And alright, our opponent explodes, double haunting, gets it done. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. A little bit light on the early mana acceleration, but at least we should hit our land drops. Our opponent on what could be a domain strategy. Herd migration discarded to get a basic and gain three. So our opponent's top end is going to involve Atraxa. And uh, cards like Leyline Binding can potentially mess with our enchantments. But uh, yeah, Buried in the Garden does answer opposing enchantments as well. What we want to avoid is a situation where we exile an Atraxa with, let's say, a Buried in the Garden, and then our opponent removes it with a Binding to re-trigger Atraxa's ability. But yeah, I think it's important that we find Hallowed Haunting to start going off. So even if they wipe the board, we can keep making those tokens. And then for now, probably discard a lane so we can kind of ramp. Even though with uh, Locked Hot House, we're going to quickly deploy the rest of our hand. Their opponent off to a pretty slow start themselves. And then next turn we can solve this. Five mana. Could see the angel or a one mana binding. Getting rid of our case. So this is a good situation for buried in the garden, answering binding. It's not going to be too messy. Get in for one. We also have our creature land that we can eventually put to use. And then we want to try to enchant a basic land so we don't run into Boseju blowing up our land. And in some matchups, cards like Field of Ruin. Play Companion. Not sure yet if I want to play the second Companion out. Another Buried in the Garden. Yeah, I'll keep this as a leftover in case our opponent decides to Sunfall next turn. Many journeys coming up. And they might have a second Leyline Binding for our case. In which case, they might be better off exiling Buried in the Garden. And then exiling our case, we have fewer enchantments in play for an eventual Hallowed Haunting. And there's a Sunfall, that's fine. So yeah, we get to untap and have some fun. Surveil, do we want to draw a Naturalist? It's okay, we can certainly do better. But I'll keep it on top. One mana, many journeys. So we've got a few extra land drops to play this turn. Didn't really want to draw Buried in the Garden, so the fact that we searched was actually good. And then I've got another many journeys to play a land of the top. Another Naturalist, why not? And there's Hello Taunting. Alright, so now we're really going off. Cast our companion, trigger, and draw, and that's it for now. Alright, not a bad turn. Showing the power of case alongside extra land drops. And that's enough for a concession, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine looking hand. We'll have to play Portico on one, and then I wouldn't mind an extra land on top. To eventually get to seven. And then we've got two ways to kind of develop our mana early. Buried in the garden for removal. So, yeah. Pretty solid hand all around. And yeah, we'll keep farmland. Been quite happy with the portico in this deck, especially once we start going off with our 
case, it's nice to be able to surveil unwanted cards to the bottom. Opponent on Monorad Aggro. Luckily, we were on the play, so we stand a chance. And Hello Taunting is a card I would eventually want. Question is, do I want it now? I will get another land of Restoration. We might bury it in the garden next turn. And then eventually, Hello Taunting is how we stabilize. All right, I'll keep it. Could regret it if we end up drawing a bunch more clunky four drops. But for now, Buried in the Garden Adversary is reasonable. Or we can just Hallowed Haunting and then next turn start making tokens. Maybe exile a three drop instead. Because Azusa can eventually deal with Adversary. And yeah, that's perfect. Godric, a much better target. Yeah, one extra land would have been nice, so we could have double-spelled Companion and Buried. But, uh, still pretty good turn. And then next turn we can keep the lands going with Restoration. Companion triggers Haunting. Alright, roll token on Adversary. If they have a Monstrous Rage, they only get to keep one roll token at once, so this would still be a trade. Trade happens. Okay, so... Maybe step one, play Companion. Not gonna enable the case this turn, so we can wait to play it. And then Restoration, get a Planes and play it. And then next turn we'll get seven lands in play. And then, yeah, we're off to the races with Hello Taunting in play already. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could use a few more lands. So, ideally, Companion draws into one or we draw one for a turn so we can play many journeys. Now I'm forced to Companion. So, yeah, this could uh, get pretty awkward as we draw another four drop. So not off to an ideal start. At least they didn't play a Thalia, which could have taxed us even more. So surveil into a land. And many journeys. Not the most impressive here. Well, we dodged a Thalia so far. Adlin's still pretty good. And there's Skrelf to protect it, so we need to... Deal with Skrull first. Now we actually get to trade, and then Buried in the Garden deals with Adlin. Wouldn't be shocked if they had another Skrull in hand if they make that attack. And yeah, I'm not gonna mess around. Adlin needs to go. It would have been pretty funny if our opponent played Anointed Peacekeeper, naming Hello Taunting. Although I imagine it probably still would have named Buried in the Garden first. It's gonna be Adversary. Still reasonable, only one creature on the battlefield. Alright, our hand's not really developing the way we want. But uh, yeah, back to back Hallowed Haunting will eventually generate a nice board for us. Ossification returns to favor. And we take six. Would really love a land so we can double spell. There we go. So Hello Taunting into another many journeys. Five out of seven lands for the case. So we're slowly getting there. And I'm happy to make any and all trades possible. Should be able to beat Virtue of Loyalty in the long run. All right, Thalia. Would have been very effective early in the game. Luckily we dodged it until now. And a Knight Errant will Convoke. So our opponent gets to find more action. Double Cathar, very nice answer to our tokens. And we'll take them 
for a trade here. Okay, let's go for another haunting. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. So our opponent can play one Brutal Cathar. Still allows us to block pretty effectively. If Thalia attacks, I'm not opposed to double blocking it or triple blocking. This attack could also imply that they have an Iganjo in hand, or maybe like a Get Lost to mana instant speed removal, although Get Lost also answers enchantments, so I kind of would have expected them to use it sooner. So Iganjo is the most likely instant speed interaction they have. So yeah, what happens if I block Adversary, double block Thalia, then the Iganjo one that's blocking Thalia, and then we lose both, we still trade for Adversary, but I do lose my entire board. How much do we care about Thalia at this point? Because if I draw land, I can still cast both of my spells. So I can single block Adversary, kind of force them to use Interaction to keep it alive. Take 10. Or I can double block it, and then if the Igancho, I lose both creatures. Yeah, let's just block with one. Alright. Looks like they didn't have anything. And drew the land. And another land. So the case is solved. And we've got some pretty impressive attackers now. And there's a Ronai Gancho coming up. Cathar number two. Not gonna be enough by itself. And another adversary. All out attack. Hope we don't block. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we got our revenge against Mono White. Yeah, overall, quite impressed by this green-white enchantment deck. And uh, it also just gets to play with one of my new favorite cards from the latest expansion. Always a fan of casting spells off the top of the deck. And uh, alongside Hello Taunting, this deck can really go off. So took a bit of trial and error to find a good home for the case of the locked hothouse, but uh, I think it was worth the effort. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.